The Copa America is slowly approaching. And in today's video, we will be ranking every single Copa America nation. How far will they go in the tournament? Are they contenders, favorites, dark horses, quarterfinals max, or thanks for coming just there for the invitation? People, get your rankings in the comments down below. Where would you rank Venezuela, Ecuador, Mexico, Brazil, Colombia, Argentina? Where would you rank these nations in the tier list? Remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And we have two guests on the channel. We have Rank from Rank Talks Ball. Remember to go check out his channel for everything Copa Libertadores, Copa Sudamericana, and also he will be covering the Copa America on his channel. And we have Jack from Dead Ball TV. And if you haven't checked out Dead Ball TV, highly, highly recommend it. Oh my oh! gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh! Ooh. Giovanni Reina, querido! Because the entertainment and the analysis is on point on Deadball TV. So both channels are in the description down below. But now, let's get to the rankings of every single Copa America nation. This one's pretty easy for me. I'm going to put this, the Altitude Merchants, AK Bolivia, in the thanks for coming section. Do you have anything to say? Do you give them any chance? I mean, they're in the group with United States, Panama, and Uruguay, but... It's going to be extremely difficult for them to progress from the group. Like you said, when Bolivia play at sea level, they are simply not the same. Uh, they're, in terms of quality, by far the worst team in, in Conmebol. Um, they don't have players playing in Europe, really. And it just shows the difference in quality whenever they play anyone outside of their home stadium, which is at 4,000 feet, uh, 4,000 meters above sea level. And it's just crazy up there. Um, they did this friendly window. Get a, they were beating Algeria. Algeria, in Algiers, they were beating them and Algeria made a late comeback. So like they, they made it really close. Don't think they are going to completely uh, flop and die. I feel like they can maybe get one or two points here in this group, but yeah, qualify, no chance. Yeah, they're just a terrible team. Um, sorry to say it, pretty much devoid of any individual talent and making it out of the group would be the greatest achievement in their footballing history this, uh, this century. What about then were. Canada? Who, who, who wants to start with Canada? This is an interesting one because they had the momentum heading into the World Cup, and then they decided, yeah, we don't, we want to stop the momentum. We don't, we're not going to take football serious in this nation. And since then, it's kind of been up and down. They beat Trinidad and Tobago, but they should be with the quality they have. If we're being extremely favorable, it is quarters max. And if John Herdman was still the manager, that's where I would have put them. But I got to go. Thanks for coming just because I don't really know who this new manager is. I don't really see him uh, enabling Canada to win games that they're not the favorite. And I think the only game that debatably they are the favorite in is probably Peru. I don't really think Canadian attendance is that great in the United States. I don't really know if it's going to be a raucous Canadian crowd. In fact, they'll probably be the away team in every single game. And they just they're just not it, bro. They got a lot of background issues too. The players not getting paid, they're not getting friendlies done. There's players paying for their own flights. Uh, we got directors resigning. It's a disaster in the background. And whenever stuff like that happens, I feel like the end result is inevitably a disappointment. I think they're in a doable group with Chile and Peru. So I think they can look at that group and say, hey, you know what, we can get out of that group. Peru, not the same anymore. Chile. You don't know what's going to happen with Chile. So I think if you're Canada, it's probably quarters max. They're in between quarters max and thanks for, uh, for coming. Ever since John Herman left, like the Federation has been a complete mess for Canada. Um, and it has shown on, on the pitch, really, like when they took that loss to Jamaica at home, which, you know, delayed their qualification for uh, Copa America. And um, yeah, I guess that the game that they are probably looking to win is against Peru. You know, Canada is like Peru plus basically because they are like Peru. They have the same flag and have a better economy. At least that's what Peruvians say. Um, but yeah, I, I feel very like very inferior cuisine probably, though. Yes, pro, that, agreed. That is very true. That is very true. Um, and the football, uh, it's it's not the best for Canada. But like you said, they are in a doable group. They are with two other inconsistent teams in, well, in with Chile and Peru. I feel like if Canada are going to make it out, they are going to depend on individual quality to make it. With this generation and with pretty much their, I would say, golden generation of likes of Kyle Lorene and all these guys, Estacchio, they could do something. But yeah, I just think it's quarters max. I had no clue that Colombia now are undefeated in 21 games. Their last loss was Argentina in 2022 away. 
I am shocked that it's been now 21 games. And it seems like they're doing it under the radar. They're doing like an FBI mission here. Okay, we're just going to slowly and quietly enter this Copa America with confidence. Luis Diaz. Then we're going to show you the young guys like Asprilla getting a goal against Romania. And they beat Spain. Obviously, it wasn't the best Spanish squad. And I was debating between contenders and favorites, honestly. I feel like they are already yeah. past the dark horse level. Yeah. I feel like they are playing really, really well right now. And like you said, 21 games unbeaten. And in that run, they've beaten strong teams, like you said, like Brazil, like um, Spain, Germany. Like they've taken on some big names here. And like you said, they've done it a bit under the radar with some players that people maybe don't know about, like John Arias, like Daniel Munoz, John Lucumi. Um, Vargas, their new goalkeeper, who finally they found a replacement for Ospina, who was like so old already. And Luis Diaz completely bowling out of his mind. And James Rodriguez, who surprisingly still got it for the national team. Like for club, it's another discussion, but for the national team, James Rodriguez still has a lot of quality and adds a lot to this team. The only problem that I have for Colombia right now is uh, the striker. I don't know who is really going to start that striker for Colombia. I it's not, like it's definitely not going to be Borge. I'm, I'm telling you that right now. I don't think it's going to be Borge. Probably yeah. John Cordova. They, they are trying like a lot of names during this friendly. So I feel like if they can sort out who is going to be their striker and set someone definitive there who can get them the goals, um, this Colombia team is going to be extremely scary. They are very defensively solid. I don't know if I can push them up to favorites, but they are going to give everyone in this uh, competition a tough game. I would put them under contenders because there's just something... There's always something about Colombia that I cannot trust. I feel like when the pressure gets to them, it's always like they underperform. Yeah, for me, uh, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, there's no pressure on this team whatsoever. Nobody's really talked about them. Even when we go to the America, everybody says Uruguay. That's that's the one that gets all the praise. Uh, they're in beat and run, obviously, but it's not just the, the run itself. It's how they're beating these teams. I mean, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe and genuinely were the better team against Spain. They absolutely massacred Romania, a Romanian side that I don't think had lost in 10 games. And then, yeah, Romania scored a couple late goals. Nobody cares. Colombia had already subbed off a lot of their players since then. Very, very impressive in World Cup qualifying. I think they're going to have some extra desire after missing the World Cup. Uh, I see that as actually a positive for this team. And defensively, I think it's not a top three defense in the Americas, but it's an extremely underrated back line and the vibes are strong with this team right now probably the strongest i've seen since i don't know 2014 world cup they do have that sort of difference maker in luis diaz and with Lu if arias can get into that form as well because we've seen it with fluminense and rank knows as a boca fan i mean copa libertadores final that he is also very good and tricky forward i'm gonna have them as contenders i wouldn't put them just as favorites because in my opinion i think there's only two favorites and have the opinions changed after this international break because they did go toe-to-toe -to -toe with France. This, this ain't no, oh, you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Costa Rica or Bolivia. They went up against one of the best teams in the world in France. And yeah, okay, they lost. But they gave a good game. And hey, this Osorio kid. I've, saw, I've seen him a couple of times from Michelin. He might be the next one. He might be the next one for Chile. So, Rank, what do you think? With Gareca now as manager, are we going to see a new and improved Chile still with some retired players in it because I still see the lineup and there's Claudio Bravo. There's still Sanchez. I don't understand why these guys are still playing, but hey, maybe one last time. Chile, it's a bit tough because like you said, um, they got Gareca, which I'm sure it's going to make a lot of Peruvian fans very happy. Um, and it, they finally have a real coach then. And like you said, they have some new players that have shown that they have talent to improve this national team after the golden generation that, that they have. You said like um, Osorio, I like Nunez as well. Paulo Diaz in the defense is really good. Um, Damian uh, Palacios as a young upcoming striker is going to be very, very good. Um, like you said, also, I, I was very surprised to see in both friendlies of this international break that Claudio Bravo was starting when they were already trying Brian Cortez as, you know, the guy that was supposed to replace Bravo. But I don't know, maybe Gareca is just trying to, you know, have a little bit of fun with these friendlies. Um, I don't know if Bravo is actually going to start at 40 years old at the Copa America. I would be shocked, honestly. Alexis Sanchez can still give it a good go. I feel like uh, he still has talent to at least compete against these other lower league uh, South American nations. 
he can provide very good uh, attacking threats for Chile. Um, they are going to be battling out with Canada for that second spot in the group. So I feel like I would have kind of placed them in the right, uh, in the same position, quarters max. Um, they have the quality to make it out of this group, but anything after that is going to be pretty difficult for them, I feel like. I, I will say I actually have them as dark horse. Dark okay. horse level. And it's pretty much entirely because of Ricardo Gareca and what he's been able to do in the Copa America. And I know that I'm putting a lot of stock into that and their recent performances, but I haven't seen, I watched the Albania game too, and I haven't seen Chile play like that in a long time. And if that's going to be any indicator of what they look like at the Copa America, then I think other teams are in trouble. And I think to be a dark horse, you can't really have expectations. You know, that's why earlier, like you can't put Colombia as a dark horse, can you? Because they're like the fourth best team. Is the fourth best team really a dark horse? I don't think so. On paper, Chile's probably, I don't even know if they're top 10 in the Americas, to be honest with you. Like certainly on paper, they're worse than even Jamaica. But for that reason, because of Gareca and his tenure, because they do have at least a bite, which is something that a lot of teams don't have. At this tournament, I think Dark Horse is where I'm going to put them. If they do finish second in their group, they would go against the winner of Group B. And if you're Chile, it's not the worst opponents. If it's either Venezuela, Ecuador, Jamaica, or Mexico, if you're if you're with the momentum that Chile have, I think actually, I kind of hear it. I kind of hear Dark Horses. Maybe we'll put them there. You know what? Gareca is the You'll man. He's the those. man. Now this next team, I have no clue. I have I have yeah. no clue. You're gonna have to start with this one, Jack, because. The reggae boys <laughs> is keeping up with the reggae boys. That's what I call them. Keeping up with the reggae boys. Every window is something new. Players going, players maybe not going, new players emerging. What I, I think they're just thanks for coming. I think that's that's Jamaica. Very good team. They have a very good manager who's experienced in these international tournaments, so he understands the sort of what how to navigate his way through a tournament. Really depends on how you want to create your tier list like if this is completely off potential then mm. it's quarters max if it's what jack thinks is going to happen it's thanks for coming because i just don't bank on jamaica being able to deliver anything ever and i think it was a little disturbing honestly in the nation's league that missing most of their best players they looked better that was weird to me. And so I feel like when they get everybody back and they're integrated for the Copa America, we're going to see the same old divides that break up every single Jamaican team since the dawn of time. And they're not going to be able to get it done and they're going to flop. Do they have the players to make a, a quarters or a semis? Absolutely. But, I mean, I'm sorry. They 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 beat Canada off a very lucky handball in, in Canada, in Canadian soil. Congratulations. And then you beat... Panama off a of golazo from Lambakisa. Have any faith in Hall Goodwinson? Because he did wonders with Iceland. I mean, the fact that he led them to a quarterfinals of the Euros, surely that's got to take some stock into this competition at least. Different, different scenario. When I think Iceland, I think the definition of squad cohesion. Jamaica is at the opposite end of that spectrum. You have your star player coming out of the media and saying, I'm, I'm being given a woman's t-shirt before practice. We don't have a ball to kick around. This is a different beast. Iceland might not be Spain or France in terms of resources, but they, for the most part, got their shit together. And Jamaica never has. So I don't... I, tactically, I, I rate him, and I rate his yeah. ability to get a good amount out of this team. But the background distractions, the pressure, the lack of concentration from their players on a regular basis... It's going to sink them. I think they'll somehow find a way to play well and then still not go through. They didn't get the most impossible group. They got a, a very tough draw, but not the most impossible. Like, if they play their cards right, they could potentially make the quarters. But like Jad was saying, it, it seems like they never get anything together. Um, watching Mik Mikel Antonio at the Copa Oro was just so disappointing. That guy couldn't do anything on the ball. Um, yeah, it, it's just always very disappointing with Jamaica and... I feel like it has to be f thanks for coming because. Um, but do you give them? But do you give them a chance in that group though? Because the other teams in that group, other yeah, than the, Venezuela, the, probably they're a mess. The other teams are a mess, and even then, Venezuela, even though they are probably the most uh, consistent of the three, uh, you cannot 
really put your faith in them as well. So like, yes, they can they make quarterfinals? Yes, yeah, sure. Like the other teams can completely collapse and Jamaica can capitalize on it. But I, I think it's going to be very, very unlikely for, unlikely for that to happen. And I think that the most unlikely thing to happen is that Jamaica implodes again. It's distractions outside and off the field, it's going to hurt this team. Until they can sort that out, then they can thrive as a footballing nation. If they don't sort that out and just do the the bare minimum is get shirts and the ball. This is the bare minimums of playing football here. We're not talking about flights or anything, that sort of situation, because that's a whole other ordeal. Just to get the proper equipment for your players. I mean, it's sad. It's sad because they have a really talented team. and They have Omari Hutchison, who's doing really well at Ipswich Town. And I don't know if it's going to thrive. But I think their main goal is to qualify for that next World Cup. The Copa America is just a test. They can qualify for that next World Cup. I think that's the main goal. Now, I'm going to come to another PE teacher here is Felix Sanchez. This guy, I'm going to say it right now, is an absolute bum. He's a bum. He should not be anywhere near managing a team in South America. Rank, I'm going to be honest, I was, very mu I was the conductor of the Ecuador train. I said, this team are going to do it. They're going to make it to a semifinal finally. I'm off it. I'm done. I'm done. After what I saw in this international window and the last and the back in November where they couldn't even score a goal, I'm I'm off the train. Felix Sanchez needs to go, and until that happens, Ecuador will not thrive. Do you agree with me, Rank? I think they're quarters max. By the way, they should be contenders with the talent they have. They have more talent than Colombia. If you put the two teams on paper, Ecuador have more talent than Colombia. The difference is the manager is. It's horrible. Yeah, I agree. Um, the talent on Ecuador is just completely crazy. They have like two or three goalkeepers that are really good. By the way, the players cannot be going to a strip club the day before oh a game. Days. Come on. Now we, we gotta hope we gotta hope that Ecuador don't play any matches in New York. Like we gotta keep them away from. And if from they, if they go to Miami, if they go to Miami, I'm scared. I'll say oh, that. Man. Um. Yeah. Yeah. It's looking really bad for Ecuador. Um with the, dis the disciplinary issues that they've been having. Um, but yeah, like you were saying, like the back line completely stuck. The midfield is fantastic, has a lot of talent. Going forward, you know, uh, I'm a bit worried because um, Kendry Paez, Gonzalo Plata, these type of guys, I don't know how much we can trust them anymore. It's very sad to see. They are obviously very talented footballers. And then for the striker position, like who's going to play? Ener Valencia? Um, Kevin Rodriguez, these type of guys who have been really inconsistent for club uh, recently. Um, that was one, my main worry for Ecuador, that they were, would not be able to uh, score enough goals because defensively, it's what I really trust them to, to thrive in. Um, yeah, they, they are still a very tough team to beat because they are very physical. They will make the games very tough for you. The, the game will get muddy when you play them. I mean, Chile are dark horses, though. Like, aren't Ecuador on that same level as well? I guess so. I guess so. I mean, it is Copa America and there's only 16 teams. So I, I would consider them dark horses in that aspect. I mean, Jack, what do you think, bro? I mean, I, I love Ecuador. I think they're a fairly good, talented team, but... It just seems like the manager's clueless. Yeah, dude, similar to you. I, I've probably been hyping up this team for three years. And I thought what Gustavo Alfaro did with the team was was incredible. Uh, I know by points per match, he didn't have an insane record. But they were going somewhere. And I think under Felix Sanchez, I don't hate him as much as you do. But everybody else does. And so when we're talking about Ecuador, I was just talking about Colombia. You want to talk about like just vibras, vibes. They're on opposite ends of the spectrum. Everybody in Colombia feels good right now. They're looking at the Copa. They say, we can do this. Every Ecuadorian that I see online hates Felix Sanchez. They hate the style of play. Now you have backroom issues boiling over. We don't know how that's going to affect the team. I, I saw they were maybe mulling over like a, a, a couple suspensions for some of the players involved in that strip club thing. I think it's, you know, I wasn't furious about it. I, I don't really care, but. The point is, there's starting to be distractions. There's a lot of negativity around the team. The best thing going for them is what Rank already said, is that defensively, I think they're the best team in CONCACAF. Well, definitely CONCACAF. But <laughs> definitely CONCACAF. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> definitely CONCACAF. Good Lord. Um, but it's a very real scenario that Ecuador draw Mexico, draw Jamaica, lose to Venezuela, one nothing, bounce out with two points. That is a completely That's realistic zero goals. scenario. 
and score zero goals at the Copa America. These guys can't score. And if they're going to make a dark horse run, the reason, first off, for me, I only put one dark horse just because I felt like the 16 teams, I don't want to have like three favorites, four contenders, and five dark horses. <laughs> That's why I put them at quarters max. Because if they're going to win a quarterfinals, I, bro, I guarantee you it's on penalty shootout. I guarantee you it's on PKs. But they should, don't, but don't you agree that they should be contenders? They should be with the talent they got. They should be the fifth highest favorite like i feel like most people and you guys can chime in here i feel like everybody goes for the most part argentina brazil uruguay colombia united states ecuador ecuador yep. should be clear of the united states minimum like colombia i, I just really really like the team right now if they, they cannot score i was watching the game against italy they got the ball to the final third and then just said here italy take the ball they had no clue what to do with it they just gave it to Gonzalo Plata, who was probably hungover on the day because he was at the strip club. Uh, I just cannot believe this sort of scenario. Like, they had so much momentum heading into that World Cup. Obviously, like, going out to the group stage to uh, Senegal was a bit of a disappointment, but they had good momentum. But I just think the Felix Sanchez appointment was the wrong, wrong appointment. That I think if they have a disaster of a group stage, I think he's gone. And I think that would be the best thing for Ecuador. But he can rectify and start his campaign as Ecuador manager with finding the right 11. He needs to find the right 11 and the right tactics. So he's continue with his back three. I don't know, but he's going to have to switch up something because clearly they need to get some goal scoring. And Valencia always shows up. Do I see it yeah. for this time around? I don't know. At least it's not in Quito, because the last time Ender Valencia scored in Quito was seven years ago. I will say everything is forgiven if he makes a, a semifinals. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they have. Oh, they've only made one semifinal in their history. If he makes a semifinal, hey, buddy, here's the lifetime contract, and I, and I will apologize. I will have a YouTube video titled "My Apology to Felix Sanchez." I'll have that ready to to play devil's advocate. Is there a case here that we could be looking at, like an Egypt at Afcon, where it's just like not this past Afcon, but previous Afcons, where it was just extremely defensive football. And they advance on like two straight penalty shootouts. Like that is that is Paraguay also possible. Again. Yeah, Paraguay 2011. Yeah. I was just about to say the same thing. Yeah, literally, pro literally. Probably, yeah, probably could see that situation. Yeah, because that was kind of like that was Paraguay's. I would say golden generation. They had really good momentum, and then I mean the Copa America. I mean they drew every game and made it to the final. I could see the same thing for Ecuador. Yeah, yeah. They just keep it nil 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 nil, and they're in the final. Where I mean they got some solid center backs, Bacho. Hincapié and Felix Torres. I mean, they're loaded in those positions. I'm not worried about that. It's just the goal score. I don't think there's a lot of positives for this team. I saw that Paulo Guerrero is still starting alongside La Padula. I don't want to know the combined age of that starting front front two because dinosaurs would return. It's thanks for coming. I mean, this team is ass. And <laughs> I don't really know what the... Uh, you know, the shining light is here. I got to see a couple of their young guys uh, in person when I was in, in uh, Lima and in Cusco for a couple games. And it's just, just the quality of Peruvian football is so terrible. I mean, it was shocking. Genuinely, the, uh, the Greek league, miles clear. Miles clear of what I saw in Peru. Fosati, I think is how you pronounce the manager's name. I was asking all the Peruvians. I was like, hey, what you think? You optimistic? 80% of them said no. And the only ones who said yes were fans of Lau because he just won the league with them. So, again, sentiment is down. Not a lot of talent here. They're absolutely finished. Making out of the group would be unbelievable, and it would only happen to spite Ricardo Gareca. That's the only way it's going to go down. <laughs> That's their motivation. It's crazy. Five years ago... They were in a Copa America final. And now we're talking about, hey, bro, you're just here for three games and you can go back. Yeah, the only positive is that Juan Reynoso is finally gone. Um, like Jack was saying, they brought in uh, Fossati, who was uh, coaching Universitario, who won the Peruvian League. But winning the Peruvian League is like not really a, much of an accomplishment. The league is a complete disaster. There is no youth development at all. Like Every time Peru goes to a youth tournament, they get smashed. I mean, Fossati doesn't have a great track record to begin with. He's the manager that got um, Uruguay eliminated of the World Cup in 2006, those penalties against Australia. Um, so national team record, not the greatest already. Um, and yeah, like you were saying, Pablo Guerrero is still a, a integral part of this team. And they are still, you know, the midfield kind of 
still decent with Corso, with Tapia, Gallese. It, you can still trust him in goal, but for Orlando, it hasn't looked the best. Uh, my goat, Luis Advincula, I don't know how much of an impact he's going to be able to do. Um, yeah, it's just looking really bad for Peru, and I feel feel like, yeah, it's thanks for coming. Like, potentially, they have that rivalry against Chile. Like, maybe they can try and get the edge over them, but... I mean, Chile always gets the upper hand in that match. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's thanks for coming. They they are cool. Rank, I'm just going to put them there. I mean, I don't need to say anything. So do you have any... Do, is there anything that worries you? I think it is Copa America. The only thing that worries me is that I feel like defensively, we have not been tested in a long, long time. Like we've been playing a lot of minons in friendlies. And even the teams in the qualifiers that we played against um, either haven't tried to attack us or they were your way. They attacked us and they scored against us. So I feel like defensively is, I'm not worried because I really trust uh, Romero, Otamendi, and obviously Emi Martinez in goal. I feel like it's a very, very solid defensive unit and it, it was shown at the World Cup as well. Um, but I feel like re in recent times, we haven't been tested much. And going forward, I feel like we just have all the options for scoring. Uh, all of our midfielders have been scoring. Even Lautaro finally got, after 15 games, he got a goal uh, last night. The only debatable position, the, the team is going to be the same at the World Cup, and the only debate is going to be who is, should be the striker, Julian or Lautaro. And either option is fantastic. Yeah, I'm not worried. I feel like we are the number one favorite, but going back to back is going to be extremely difficult because now everyone wants to be us. Every single team wants to beat Argentina and prove a point. We, there's a target on our back. And I feel like Uruguay, Colombia, Brazil, even the USA, if we get to play them, Ecuador, everyone is going to want to give us a tough game. Rank, you're being too kind. You have the easiest draw. You have the easiest path yes. to get to this final. Let's be honest yes. here. You yes. avoided everything. Yes, no. You avoided Colombia. You avoided Brazil, Uruguay. You should you should be making that final easily. I know. Yeah, the, the final. You you was the you avoided the second through sixth top favorite. I'm aware that the draw was incredibly favorable for us, and the final is the minimal expectation. Anything but the final is going to be a disappointment. Once you're in the final, you know we're going to face a tough team, and yeah. it's a 50-50, but we have to be in that final. I will not accept anything less. They're a goaded team. They're trying to build a dynasty. If they do a Copa America, World Cup in the Copa America in three years, and a Philippe team, I forgot about that as well. Damn, what an achievement. Where do you put the USA? Quarters max, baby. Quarters max. It's very simple. It's very, very simple. They win the group. Okay, the only way that they go further than the quarters is if Paraguay pulls an upset and finishes second. That's the only way that they can make They're it. They're not winning their group. They're not winning their group with Uruguay. Okay, then Paraguay would need to win Group D, which is not <laughs> going to happen, and then U.S. is going to have to beat them in the quarterfinals. I think it's very simple. I can sum it up in 10 seconds. Greg Berhalter never, ever beats teams that he's not supposed to beat. He's never, ever pulled an upset. Whether it's Colombia, whether it's Brazil, they'll be the underdog. They will lose. That's it. Damn. Damn, man's coming with pipe bombs like you see him punk from WWE. Look, I, I've already given my thoughts about the USA a lot on this channel. I don't trust the manager. Very talented team. But if it is Colombia in the quarterfinal, if Colombia win their group, I would feel a little bit more positive. If it's Brazil, ugh, I just don't think USA have the capacity, as, it, as they would say, or the mentality to beat a Brazil. Maybe they could see a Colombia and be like, hey, you know what? We could beat them. I just, I cannot trust Greg Berhalter. The guy is tactically clueless. He's a PE teacher. I hope, I pray he proves me wrong, but the guy is not good enough. If he doesn't do well at this Copa America, people really in the FA have to look at it and say, if you cannot beat one of these teams, if you finish third in that group, oh, you're automatically sacked. I don't care if you win the Nations League. The Nations League is just an invitation now for the USMNT. You have to mm -hmm. do well at this Copa America. It's minimum to make it, for my opinion, is a semifinal. You're hosting it. You have to build momentum. I, I, I do agree. I think they're quarters max. I mean, Rank, do you have any other thoughts? Do you think they're dark horses? I mean, it's pretty crazy that we have Chile over the USA. But, you know, that's that's the USA right now. You just can't trust them. If you get, give Gareca the USA, oh, I'm feeling confident. Uh, 
Oh my gosh, he's cooking, dude. Oh, he's cooking with Pulisic Absolutely oh. cooking, dude. That man has dreamt about managing a team oh. that talented. The USA would be contenders for the Copa America. I'm not feeling that confident anymore. Um, but USA is probably the team that I'm looking forward to watching at the Copa America the most because I really want to see if this team is talented for CONCACAF or talented, period. That's the main question that has been floating around my head for a long time now. Um, because we know that they are the only hope of CONCACAF of actually doing anything at this tournament because the other teams are just really not good enough. Um, and they are playing at home. Um, the USA at home have had a much better uh, record than playing away, especially under Greg. Um, and yeah, the team is just so good when you look at the lineup the first team at least it just has to be like greg has to get his lineup and his tactics right and probably something can happen or you know the players can make something happen in spite of what greg does so well that's what they did in the nations league they just did individual yeah. quality and that's what won it pretty much pretty much um that's why it's so hard to rank the usa because if the team is actually that talented they should be around the level of chile or even higher but you just never know um, especially because I don't know if USA have the bite or the mentality that it takes to play against Conmebol because in Conmebol everything is different. Every game is just like a fight for your life. Yeah. And I don't know if the USA are, are ready for that. I, I want to be kind and say dark horses just because they are the hosts, but I'm not mad about them being for the snacks. Honestly, it's uh, going to be very difficult for them. We'll, we'll give this one to rank. Play. We'll give this one to rank. We'll move it to Dark Horses. Host tax. Host tax. That's why. They're on the rise. And their ultimate goal is really to qualify for their first World Cup. And they're pretty much on point on doing that with the Gunnable qualifier so far. Or did they yeah. lose to... Oh, they, sorry. Yes, they lost 2-1 to Italy. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, this is why I got true it. Guatemala. <laughs> I okay. But, but, to true Italy, Guatemala. <laughs> but, but to Italy, they gave a really tough game. That, that's the point we were going with. To, to Italy, they gave a very tough game. Um, that's fair. Yep, that's fair. You know, and under, under Batista, they, they've been looking a lot better, especially we saw it in the in the qualifiers where they completely dismantled Chile and they got a draw against uh, Brazil on the road. So, yeah, v Venezuela, it's looking a lot better defensively, which is something that I never expected I would say because the main thing about Venezuela is that they were always very talented going forward, but they were very innocent defensively. They would make clumsy mistakes playing out from the back and you could capitalize on it and you could always beat Venezuela like that. Now they are like very competent and they know what they're doing. It feels like the coaching from Batista really paid off. And Venezuela is a team that, you know, you cannot afford to underestimate. And they are in a very doable group, uh, especially looking at, you know, this Jamaica team, this Mexico team, even Ecuador, it's a team that they could beat. I, I don't want to put too many dark horses, like you said. I feel like maybe it's a Coros Max because, again, they are still, at the end of the day, they are still Venezuela. They they have a history. And a <laughs> oh, reputation. you can't do that, man. <laughs> no, you can't do I, that I have to, to them. be honest. Um, Rondon is still playing for this team, right? Like, hey, he's still, he's still playing well, though. And he's scoring, scoring for, yeah. He's scoring for fun. For, it's a for Pachuca right now. He scored for fun. Yeah, and they have my boy uh, Soteldinho, like they have to call him. So yeah. I, I really so like that good. player. Um, so good. El Mago Martinez in the midfield, um, another defensive rock that just can dictate play. So I feel really confident about Venezuela. Um, but they are still Venezuela, so I, I have to say quarterfinals. Argentine looking down on the Venezuelans. Nothing new here. Um, no, but okay. I completely agree. I'm going. Uh, I'm going quarters. I feel like we're falling a little too much in love with Venezuela. You know, they used to be like the ugly chick, and now she's taking care of herself a little bit. But now we're comparing her to Ariana Grande, and we've gotten carried away. Is kind of how I feel with Venezuela. I would actually say there's there's borderline pressure mounting on Venezuela because everybody's like, oh, they're I guarantee you they're going to the World Cup. Watch out for Venezuela. They're a dark horse. And I think outside of Maturin, they're average. At best, they're average. They're a very good home side now. Yes, it was a historic result against Brazil. Brazil had 92 shots. Bieo scores the 
goal of his life. I'm not going to look too much into that. Like, don't tell me Venezuela deserved a draw in that game. I don't really think they did. I, I think Brazil deserved the three points. They just weren't a funk at that time. I think they're good enough to make, you know, second in this group, maybe even a surprise win. But the only way they go past the quarters is if they get, honestly, if they get like Peru or something. Like, I hopefully Vina think they'll prove us wrong. I mean, if they can do any anything similar to 2011 Copa America, where they were, I mean, probably the funnest team to actually, you know, Uruguay were probably the funnest team to watch at that Copa America, but Venezuela were close second. I mean, if Rondon, at the age he is, still leading Venezuela. If he can do something this Copa America, he will forever be a legend of the country. Now, what about Brazil, guys? Where where do we put Brazil? They had an interesting window. I watched their game against England. I didn't get to watch their game against Spain. We see the new stars they got. Midfield, that's my big question. I don't think they have the quality in the midfield to really be favorites. Like If you put the midfield of Uruguay, it's better. You put the midfield of Argentina, it's better. That's where Brazil is lacking. They're gonna, they have to start Endrick at this Copa America. There's no doubt about it. If he doesn't start, I'm not watching Richarlison and I'm not watching Rafinha try and be Brazilian. For a while, all I know is Rafinha is from Easter Island. That's where the guy's from. He cannot See, go past. Go ahead. That that's where I disagree with you, but I kind of agree at the same time. I don't think the midfield is the problem. I actually think their midfield is completely stacked. I think their wingers are kind of shocking and they still don't have a nine. But like, let's not act like Vinicius is balling out for Brazil. Yeah, he's not. He hasn't. He hasn't performed. He's Hendrick's got one less goal than Vinny for Brazil. That's is that a real stat? (laughs) Yes, it's a real stat, bro. Vinny has three goals. Hendrick has two. Yeah, that's that's embarrassing. Um, But Mm. dude, I think the midfield is. Is good. I think they're figuring it out. I mean, what it's got to be like Paqueta, Guimaraes. I don't even care. But I, th- I think they're good there. Casemiro probably is the, as the six. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what's homeboy's name? Ja- I think he plays. Ja- Joao Gomez, uh, Andre. Joao yeah. Gomez from Wolves. Yes. Yes. yes yeah. Yeah. He's not. He's not. A, he's not in Brazil. But yeah, I think it's. I think it's the attack that's been letting them down. I mean, when I've seen Brazil recently, um, it's chance after chance after chance. A lot of them being generated by the midfield, finding the space in between, finding the right pass, and they don't have somebody to score. So that's kind of where I see their downfall as I have them as contenders, again, because I have Argentina and Colombia as my favorites, and I I didn't want to have three favorites. Um, I mean, it's Brazil. They're still dangerous. Looks encouraging under the new manager. It's in God's hands. I don't know what they're going to do with the Copa, but I'm excited to see it. Do you kind of think it's a free hit for Brazil at this Copa America? No, because you're Brazil. You don't get free hits. Valid, valid point. It is Brazil. It is the Celeste They got five stars. But I was just thinking to myself, because they, they were a mess last year. And losing their first ever home game in World Cup qualifiers, they just got to play the youth and just say, hey, guys, this is your experience. Enjoy the occasion. 2026 is when we get back to actual Brazilian standards. I think for this Copa America, they could take a free hit. I mean, Rank, what do you think about their midfield especially? Do you think it's – see, I think Argentina's is better. Uruguay's is better. I don't think Brazil's midfield, other than like Paqueta, because Casemiro is on his last legs. The guy is soon getting crutches and going to be walking on crutches. The guy cannot run anymore. Sure. What do you think of Brazil? I think everybody agrees that they're contenders. I don't think, not even the craziest Brazilians can say, yeah, we're definitely going to win this Copa America. Yeah, look, they could get a maybe easy draw on the right side, even though it's the most more difficult side. I mean, uh, when it comes to midfield, it doesn't look stuck when you compare it to the, to the opposition, like you said, like Argentina, Uruguay, even like Colombia or Ecuador. Like they are kind of on that same level no. with uh, Guimarães. Okay, Colombia is pushing it. Colombia no. is pushing it. <laughs> for real. No, no, no. For real, no. for real. I mean, bro. Uh, and watching that game against uh, Spain, I really thought that, you know, Spain got two very dubious penalties, but I thought Spain was the better team in that game. Um, and it wasn't until Enrique came on that Brazil actually began creating any attacking threat because before that, there was nothing, absolutely nothing. It was kind of like the Rodrigo show because Vini and Rafinha were doing absolutely nothing that game. And yeah, offensively, it looks very dire. And they are having to rely on this kid to actually get them goals. Like That's to the point we've gotten to with Brazil. Like um, Enrique is a bowler, but you cannot be relying on him as Brazil. Uh, you sure there's nobody else? That, well, that's I mean, the rank, rank, they, rank. They tried the brr, brr merchant, and he's not yeah. good enough. He's yeah. not. 
I, I look. But I respect Richarlison coming out and talking. He's not a. It's he's Brazil. not a striker. I know, bro. But they. This is the issue, Rank, and you know, Argentina were in the absolute gutter. They were in the gutter, like it's a New York uh, subway station with the rats. That's how bad Argentina were with the generation they had about like 2018, 2019 scenario with San Paoli. Brazil's in that state right now. They are. They're in a transition. They just gotta yeah. trust the youth and just say, "Hey, Endrick, this is your team now for the next ten years." Ball out. I don't know why they don't call up Vitor Roque. I think Vitor Roque deserves a shout. And you can see they're even giving Savio some time. So I think for this Copa America, it's it's Project Youth. Trust in Vinny, but Vinny's got to deliver. I mean, the fact that he's got three international goals, three. Like you can't score three against yeah. Bolivia. I mean, that's that's poor. So Vinny's got to he's got to take since Neymar is injured. Vinny's got to take that role and being the leader for this team and. We'll find out with Vin, Vinny in Brazil, but obviously they're always going to be and, contenders, people. And we haven't even gotten to the fullbacks. Like, Brazil was the land of oh, the Jesus. fullbacks. So, like, where have they gone? Like, since when are, are we, we playing? When we're, actually, we're, actually living, we're actually living in a world where USA has better fullbacks than Brazil. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it's, it's shocking. Like, and, you know, we're going to get to a team that haven't beaten their rivals since 2019. But for Brazil, it's the same. Just saying, it's it's the same for Brazil. It's getting very worrying. They're gonna be given some very tough games because nobody's scared of them. Nobody is afraid yeah. of Brazil anymore. That's the main issue. Teams are gonna play against them. Yep, I agree. I think they've lost completely the aura. They have. See, they used to have the Roman Reigns from WWE. They used to have the finger up and say, mm -hmm. "This is my, this is my arena." Now they've lost it completely. They, they, they've they lost all the superpowers that is Brazil. And this is what happens. You know, sometimes it's not going to be the greatest. You're going to have to suffer for a couple of years. And then just trust the youth players like I've been keep on reiterating because they have to just do it. You cannot trust a Richarlison. You cannot trust a, I don't know, who, what other strikers they got. Who else is out James there Deuce. for Brazil? No. You, eh. No, I'm not trusting him. Maybe just maybe just throw in Moon, uh, Muniz from Fulham up there. That guy, he actually, looked like the real deal, actually. Yeah, he actually, he actually looked pretty cold against Tottenham as well. Did he score two goals against oh. them? Yeah, he did. Yep. Yes. Oh, dude, he's been yeah. he's been very good in the goal the games I've seen. Yeah. Just so maybe he maybe he deserves a shout. So it's going to be a sort of fascinating tournament for Brazil because I don't think many people are going to pick them to win it because of how poor they are. But it's just more about seeing the future for Brazil with our very own eyes. Now, can they win it? No. Los Ticos Costa Rica. I mean, <laughs> I mean, shout out to them qualifying. And Gustavo Alvaro, is, is, the man is a genius. The man is a genius. Yep. This generation of Costa Rica, they have no business qualifying to this Copa America. No business. And yet they scored some... That second goal they scored against Honduras, might as well just give them the Puskas award. Give them, give it to them. That, that goal was ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's... Thanks for the invitation. Thanks for qualifying. Back to San Jose. Nope, they're ahead of schedule. Congratulations. If they get one point, that's a W. They are just so bad playing out of the back. Like the defense is shocking. If they are, they are going to concede a lot of chances, and it's going to be up to Navas to actually bail them out because mm. every game they are going to concede like four or five clear cut chances, and that's just not sustainable. Even if the midfield and the attack. They can sometimes link up on the opposing uh, side of the field, but no, no. Defensively, they are just so bad, and it's not sustainable. They are going to get thrashed. I got Uruguay's favorites. I mean, does anybody disagree with Uruguay being a favorite? No. Yeah, I had them contender. Okay. I can see either contender or favorites, but why don't you have them at favorites then? I don't love the bench options. I don't rate Bielsa as highly as everybody else does. I think he's got a phenomenal PR team. And I think there's a lot of expectations on Uruguay right now. And you don't think they can match those? To be fair, if you actually look at Bielsa in international tournaments, it's not good. He does great in the qualifiers. In the international tournaments, it's not great. So I can kind of see your point. I mean, Rank, do you think they have a good... They have a fantastic starting eleven. Um, I'll put them as favorites simply on the basis that they have, in my opinion, the best midfield at this Copa America with Ugarte, Valverde, De La Cruz, and I'm missing someone, Bentancur. I feel like that midfield is completely stacked, and they 
Ugarte being the main guy that is going to recover all those, put the ball forward, and everyone else is just going to deliver chances for Darwin and Pelis 3. I feel like they are going to be a very, very dangerous team. And we saw them on the counter attack with the kick and pressing against Argentina in La Bombonera. It was completely crazy. He gave, uh, he outcoached Scaloni. I ha haven't seen like Scaloni get outcoached like that in a long, long time. Um, but like you said, Bielsa, in my opinion, is a fantastic manager, one of the best managers in the world, but he has a very empty trophy case. And that mm -hmm. that is something that it, it's just so consistent with him that you cannot ignore it. Like you cannot say, oh, well, he got unlucky at this tournament. No, it, it happens to him all the time. So that's the maybe the one reason why I cannot trust Uruguay. And, and I want to see that Darwin has been very good for the national team, but he has to prove it in the tournament now. Um, yeah. So yeah, there. There are a lot of ifs around uh, Uruguay. I'm very hopeful for them, and I feel like they are, should be one of the favorites. All right. Um, I'm just going to put them there. I, I don't know what to say with Mexico. I've kind of given my thoughts on it. I mean, Rank, do you want to start us off? Because you said you want to talk about Mexico first. It's been a disaster. I don't really see a lot of positives. The good thing for them is they're in a doable group. That's the only positive I see. You see, you say that with Santi Jimenez, but it could be Santi Jimenez, Henry Martin. If they are not creating chances, it doesn't matter which striker you have. The midfield is not there. The chance creation is not there for Mexico. If Edson Alvarez is going to disappear every game, it doesn't matter which striker you have. Um, this team under Jimmy Lozano, they were calling it the Lamborghini. Like the Lamborghini crashed on the first lap like, against the USA. It feels like every time Mexico has a, a tough game, uh, they just completely collapse. It's been like this for a long time with Mexico. It's been a long time coming with the changes they made to Liga MX, you know, removing the relegation, um, paying their players huge wages and not allowing them to live for Europe and, you know, grow themselves, develop. And then there are foreigners who are starting ahead of those youth uh, prospects in the Mexican League. So, like, Mexicans are forced to stay and then they are not even allowed to play in the Mexican League. So, it's just a system that uh, doesn't help their development because I don't believe this narrative that is very popular here in Argentina that Mexico doesn't have talent. Mexico has a lot of talent. They've won those under-17 World Cups. They won the Olympics. Like Mexico produces a lot of talent and the talent just goes down the drain under this system that is Liga MX and it sits on the national team. The players are not good enough, the ones that make them. I feel like it's Carlos Max. But, because... but, don't, but don't you think, yeah, in this group, they can at least get out of this group and be a quarters team. Yeah, yeah, they can yeah. get out of this group, but I don't know. I wouldn't pay, you know, we also have Venezuela and Ecuador. They are all kind of on that same level and it's just going yeah. to it's just gonna come down to who is better on the day. And I feel like with Ecuador and Venezuela, at least I can count that they are going to fight for it. I don't know if Mexico are going to fight for the shirt. I feel bad for you, man. I really do. Because I, I want Mexico to do... That's why I got this... I mean, first off, this kid is lovely. But this kid deserves yeah, it's, Rafa. It's it deserves... It deserves, Rafa Marquez should be wearing this kit. Not Henry Martin, who are Sanchez, Gallardo, like these. I'm going to be honest. They're bums. They're bums. Yeah. They're not good enough to play for L3. I'll be honest. So do you have any, you have, are you positive heading into this Copa America? Or are you just like, you know what? Just make the quarterfinal. If we lose, we lose. We move on. But it's really worrying signs, isn't it? Yeah. I'm honestly hoping for four points, second in the group, and then just give a good game to Argentina. That's really what I'm I'm hoping for here. I mean, the talent is dire. I mean, genuinely, a combined Panama Mexico eleven probably has four Panamanians in it. It's just, it's devoid of hope because really, we have some pieces that we could experiment with, but we're never going to. And I just feel like I've been saying the same thing for years now um, about the problems with the Mexican national team. I disagree in the sense that I do think that they'll they'll give it a go. And I think Mexico do play better in tournaments. And so that's why I give them the edge over both Jamaica and Venezuela to, to go through, but it's not going to be pretty football. I'll tell you that right now. That nation's league final was like the first time in that rivalry where I thought the USA actually playing better football than Mexico. Oh, for sure. For sure. That's, we that, had, that's the scary part. string three passes together. Like, yeah, the group's doable. Okay. We'll finish second. And then, lose in the quarterfinals 
And then Jimmy Lozano and the FMF will say, okay, mission accomplished. We made it out the group and that'll be that. So that's, that's why I just really don't care. I'm completely indifferent. Do you think Paraguay can be a dark horse or are they quarters max? Tough group with Brazil and Colombia. Yeah, bro. These guys play like arguably the most defensive football on the continent. If, if they go through, it's because they got three draws and finished second. Like, they, they, I don't know if they're going to score, bro. Unless in CISO and Ramon Sosa ball out and Almiron turns into Alma God, then they're not doing much. Um, it's very weird with Paraguay because they really have some very good players in there. Well, and CISO is one of them. Almiron is the other. Um, Diego Gomez, who showed up with the under 23s at the pre Olympic tournament. Well, yeah, didn't they, didn't they just win that under 23 tournament? They won the under 23 tournament, and Diego Gomez was like the best player. And he he was slowly starting to get better for Inter Miami as well. Um, in the Argentinian league, they have some very good players, like he was saying, Ramon Sosa, but also Villa Santi, Gabriel Avalos. Um, well, um, who is Gustavo Gomez for he's been at Palmeiras for like forever now but yeah. uh, I, I don't know they, this team even with all the talent they cannot score I, I don't know what is it about <laughs> them because that, that game against Peru I, I, I was watching it and I was like this team is just cursed they are creating all the chances and it's just hitting the yeah. post or going wide so is it, it thanks for coming really as sad. well then for you for it's, Paraguay it's thanks for coming because and also because they have Brazil and Colombia, which is just going to be a very tall task for them. They can probably sneak out a draw against Brazil or Colombia, like if, if you know, just crab house their way around it. Panama, I don't think they're going to make it out of that group. I mean, they could beat the USA because they're familiar with the with each other, obviously from Concacaf. But I wonder if maybe they were on such a high. Everybody was smoking the Panama hype and saying yes. They're going to be one of those surprise CONCACAF teams. And then they lose to Mexico. And then they lose to a depleted Jamaica sw side. And you're like, maybe they're just overhyped. Do you really think they're they're overhyped? I'm a very no, no, no. big... No, I'm, not saying I'm, just, I'm not saying... I'm not saying... I don't think okay, they're overhyped. Okay. But, but, you, but you, there are people out there that think Panama are overhyped. No. Come on, man. Look at the work Christensen has done with that team. That's what I'm saying. That's what it's, I'm it's saying. It's amazing. Like, Okay, so like after Nations League, perfect example. I talked about this in my video. Like, Panama's not supposed to beat Jamaica. They're not even supposed exactly. to be in the Nations League semifinals. They're not supposed to get there. Like, yeah, they lost 3-0 to Mexico. They also were missing one of their best players, and then Barcelona gets hurt in the fifth minute. And Mexico scores six, three times from six shots. Like, we, we've never been that clinical since 2018. So we have an amazing game. He's missing key players. It's a it's an away game, of course, because it's in the U.S. And people are like, "Oh, I knew I knew Panama didn't have it in them." I said, "We." Yeah, I had people in my chat saying, "Oh yeah, Panama like they flopped." I'm like, "Panama flopped. Were they supposed to beat Mexico? Are you out of your mind?" Christensen is maxed out completely. What this this player pool can do. There's nothing more that he can do. Outside in the ta outside of the tactics he's implemented and the results that he's gotten, which include wins against the United States, Jamaica. I want to say he's beaten he did beat Canada in a World Cup qualifier. What do you want from the guy? But this is a different beast. This is the Copa America. He's not beating Uruguay. Like that would be if he beats no. Uruguay or the US, I'm not even kidding. Immediately after the Copa America ends, I expect a top national team to immediately buy out his contract with Panama and hire him immediately if he wins one of those games. It would be you know unbelievable. Who, you know who should hire him? Ecuador. <laughs> Actually true. Dude, he would be so cold. He will be so cold at Ecuador. I, I've been saying I'd take him in Mexico, 100%. See, I think a lot of people are on that same – like pipeline that like oh Panama's overhyped oh we thought they could beat Mexico. Look at the players and where they're playing. Look at where they're. I think some dude plays in Armenia if I'm not mistaken. I think some mm -hmm. dude plays in Bulgaria. Like come on guys. Andrade I think against, plays in yeah, yeah yeah. The only guy I know is Murillo who's for Marseille and that's it. And then obviously Carasquilla because the guy's a baller of a midfielder. That's it. 
you yeah. you ask any random dude on the street of England, he will not name you one Panamanian player. He can name you an Ecuadorian. He can name you a Mexican player at least. He ain't gonna name you a Panamanian. So the fact that they've even mm-hmm. qualified to the Copa America, give the man a statue. The United States, if if we see a great disaster class, basically, because otherwise there's absolutely no way. Uh, like Jack was saying, I feel like they have a tough time even fielding eleven players. Like when people were telling me that this Panama team is doing super well and they were talking to me about the goalkeeper and the defense, I was like, wait, but the main center back and the goalkeeper play at Monagas in Venezuela. Like, I'm really supposed to get hype about this team? Uh, it's it's Panama. <laughs> like, they, they have really overperformed and I applaud them for that because it's really impressive what they have managed to do with the talent pool they have. But yeah, at this level, like, it's Copa America is just a different beast and they, I would be shocked if they make it out. Thank you all for watching. As you can see, a very interesting debate on the Copa America nations and where they should be ranked on the tier list. But I want to hear your tier list rankings in the comments down below. And remember, I'll be previewing every single nation ahead of this Copa America from Panama to Bolivia to Costa Rica. So if you want those sort of videos, subscribe to the channel. But have a beautiful day. Stay safe in this crazy world. And until next time, adios.